Hello there and welcome to Equity Story. My name is David Malinowski and today we are going to talk a wee bit about artificial intelligence and how that can make a humongous difference to one's firm in terms of productivity in particular. My guest today is uh, Wojciech uh, Ozimek, one to tribe founder. Hello everyone, hi. You know, lovely to have you. Thank you, you know, to spare a moment to, you know, come and see me. I know how, you know, amazingly busy you are, but I suppose busy is good, isn't it? Yeah, it's, this time it's, I mean, actually it's very good because artificial intelligence is, uh, uh, I mean, we have a tremendous growth of artificial intelligence. Uh, I mean, since the introduction of GPT-3, I think it was November. Yeah, the business, the business is running, and it's mm -hmm. and it's 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 it's, it's a crazy stuff. I mean, it's uh, I mean, when I, I don't know, two years ago, we were talking about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. The people were like. Uh, this is some kind, like yeah, it's interesting by some kind of math stuff, mathematics, uh -huh. something boring, yeah, you know, language, mathematics. It's it's not about business, yeah. Mm -hmm. But today it's like it's like the, we we are we are living in, in very interesting times. I think it's um, it's this um, switch to, as you said, the mathematics and yeah. the code based stuff from that to uh, you know having a user-friendly interface yeah, you can just yeah, type yeah, yeah. things that's, in yeah, and it exactly, tells you stuff exactly in return so that's 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 what you know really caused this whole uh enthusiasm about about this technology but before we venture into what is now i really really wanted to talk about the past for a bit so you started your journey with uh, computer programming with uh you know it at university yeah, yeah, in yeah. 1992, if I remember correctly, yeah, yeah, at yeah. Warsaw University. And even back then, from what I understand, you were interested in artificial intelligence. Yeah, basically, uh, I started the, the, the uh, I started to on the on the um, uh, my IT journey a little bit earlier because it was I think in primary school. It was mm -hmm. the 80s, so it was a crazy time about mm -hmm. personal computers. And then I was um, I was very I was very interested in the connection between uh, computer science and mathematics, yeah, mm -hmm. because it was uh, and this this seemed very theoretical, uh, and I started this, uh, to study on Warsaw University. It was um, it was mathematics and computer science. So 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 uh, the funny thing is that at at this time it was perceived as something very theoretical, like there is a practical computer science and there is the theoretical when people are basically dealing with numbers not with the real stuff. But uh, uh, the, the, the program of the studies was about uh, computer algorithms, about machine learning, about programming in logic, and, and so on. And that was so, 1992. And, uh, yeah, it was, 19, uh, it was 1992. So it was a, a little bit different artificial intelligence, but the algorithms were the same. Uh, I mean, the difference between um, 1992 and today is that uh, today we have much more powerful computers. So everything I learned in 1992 can be done now, uh, but uh, due to the, the computing power, yeah, the computer yeah. power, the computer power is it's, it's, it's exponential growth. Yeah, so the computer power now allows you to create awesome things. Uh, it it was unbelievable in uh, in 1992. Yeah, so this is this is this is this difference. Pretty, pretty incredible to you know, consider this sort of sh relatively short period of time. I mean, yeah. just for my viewers' um, uh, information, in 1992 I was actually born, so it was not <laughs> that long a time ago, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at the massive leap that we uh, that we yeah, made yeah, since yeah. then, and obviously yeah, from, from my perspective, it was like I, I was born in time that there was no computers. I mean, the, the closest thing was calculator. I mean, <laughs> something you can calculate the, the stuff. Uh, and in the 90s, there was the first boom, the computers. Then there was an internet in 1990s, in fact. Then there was um, uh, social media revolution. Now we have artificial intelligence revolution, yeah? So it's like, it's exponential growth. It's, Indeed. it's awesome. Indeed. So in terms of, I picked up one of, on one of the things that you mentioned when you talked about, when you spoke about the, the past. So it was much more theoretical, but surely, as you know, young people at university, you know, you and your mates from your cohort, you had discussions about these things, you had 
perhaps some predictions, hopes, dreams for that stuff, you know, or what, what it would like in 10, you know, 15, 20 years time. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? You know, in, in a sense, what I'm trying to gauge here, you see, is that has that actually materialized, the, the way you thought yeah. about, you know, how this is going to grow? I, I think we had some, um, there, there were very high hopes about, um, I mean, this haptic part of computer science, like how you interact with the computer. Yeah, it was, uh, I think there was a lot of hopes about that, like uh, that, that we'll, we'll all have like virtual reality helmets and artificial intelligence glasses. There's something like, you know, this was very sci-fi. Yeah, we were very young people at, at this time. And, uh, and it was like, uh, we're not expecting, uh, I think what was, for me, what was surprising, we are not so much expecting uh, internet. It was like, eh, there will be some computer networks and so on and so on, but we're expecting something like, uh, something that is now metaverse, but maybe not so connected and so on and so on. So a lot of people were, for example, there, were, there, were, there, was, there was a faculty about computer graphics. There was a lot of people that were, you know, fascinated by 3D graphics and so on. But at this time, it was very, um, it was very primitive, comparing, for example, to I know today's games market. It was like I, I know I'm I'm able to do some I don't fan, fancy 3D car. Yeah, Even some, memory uh, memory uh, cards were much smaller, um, yeah, yeah. so you see, that surely also constrains what people could produce in terms of graphics. Yeah, yeah, there was the the, the memory, the processing power. I mean the. Um, um, I remember the times where you to process the 3D, you need to put another graphic card into your computer. Really? So there was oh, a God. basic graphic card, and there was something that's called the 3D Voodoo card, and this, <laughs> uh, this Voodoo made, yeah, <laughs> made some sort of like computer, you know, special magic. In, special in magic. You need yes. to add some special magic to your computer. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this was, uh, and now the graphics cards are so powerful that they help to build uh, AI models, yeah? they, they can help you to process the AI, uh, AI stuff uh, in the computers or in the servers and so on and so on. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, sort of fast forwarding this uh, a bit, let's talk about now. So um, obviously you, you've started um, in, in, you know, in your primary school years, then you went to university. So your yeah. entire career has been revolving around computers, computer yeah. science. Yes, yes. and. At this stage, you are at the helm of uh, One Two Tribe. So, if you perhaps want to tell us a bit more about that, <laughs> what you guys do, and uh, you know, you, you sort of you know your journey in, in, in yeah. with the firm. Yeah, I started uh, after the studies. I first started to work in the uh, telecom industry. There was only one telecommunication company I in remember, Poland. I remember. Yeah, it was called <laughs> TPSA. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was, uh, but uh, it was. Um, it was a huge opportunity. I mean, because it was like there was a, the internet boom was starting, and in uh, and in instant instantly I I I I started to work in the center of it. I mean, it's like connectivity, internet, access to the network, and so on and so on. We're working with a very uh, complicated technologies like distributed processing, databases. So it was for me. It was. Uh, Totally different than my studies because in studies I still was uh, uh, was the studies were as I mentioned very theoretical, and in the, st the, the work for the telecommunication company I had a, a lot of practical stuff like databases and so on. Then I moved to the consulting company, and in the consulting company we started to make a, uh, we started to to build the uh, the internet solutions. We have a very visionary chief of the company, uh, Boris Stokalski. I would like to say hello for him. It's, if, it's, if he will be watching this, it's, for me it was, it was a great pleasure to work with him. And he had the vision of the, um, I mean everything that is now going on today, including artificial intelligence. So he was a kind of visionary guy. And for me this was a, a, another, another change uh, in, in my career. I, I started to think that at some, at some point in my life, I, I would like to be like him. <laughs> so it was, like, it was an inspiration yeah, as well. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a, it was the inspiration to start my own company. And then I started my own company. That was, uh, this was one to try, it was a two or three. So we have like 20 years of the brand right now. But the company was about uh, 
And this is another surprise, it was a, it was a gaming company. Okay. So we started to, to make uh, computer games. I mean mobile games mainly. Uh, the idea was that uh, in I've seen a lot of the solutions of the ap uh, applications of the internet to the business side in this consult consulting company, but when start, but from my telecommunication experience, I decided that it would be good to create some infotainment solutions for them, for them, for them, uh, for the B two C market because the potential of the B two C market, uh, I, I thought it was. Higher. And we started to make games. There were social games, multiplayer games, and it was the first 10 years of the of company history was about gaming. Uh, and then uh, there was a collapse on the social gaming market. When uh, was this? Which it year? was 2012, 2014. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. uh, you remember, there was lots of companies like Zynga, and there were, I mean, everyone believed that the Facebook would be the future of the gaming market. And at some point, uh, the mobile market changed the, the situation. There were some uh, spectacular spin-offs or pivots of the companies that were doing games. And uh, we were one of these companies. I mean, we, we started to, we, we, we decided, okay, uh, we need to specialize on this game market to grow uh, faster. And we decided that we'll use our knowledge about gaming market to build the business solutions. I mean, because we stored a lot of data about how people behave, a lot of psychological data, a lot of information about how social influence work in uh, between people. And, so, and, and we decided that, okay, this is a good idea to go into using this, uh, this knowledge in to, to, to help businesses manage people, they communicate with their employees and so on and so on. And we started to work on the gamification market. I mean, gamification as uses, usage of the game's mechanisms for the, for the business. Mm -hmm. And this is today's uh, one to try because from this gamification market, we, we, we moved to the performance management. So gamification is only part of our business. Now we manage the performance of, uh, of large teams in large companies using our solution. And this appeared to be the niche in which uh, we um, we can be the leader. I mean, we found the niche in which we can be the we can the market leader. So this is uh, this is this is the story. And funny thing is that looking from uh, looking at the past, <laughs> I see that uh, every piece of the puzzle fits right in the whole picture because. Uh, this this uh, this uh, this pivot from the games to the business market also appeared as um, for me was also um, is, is was also some kind of this direction uh, brought me back to my mathematics background to artificial intelligence and all the stuff because we are now using uh, I mean, now I'm using the, the things that I was, uh, I mean, encountering during my studies. I was uh, learning in, in, in 90s. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is something that is something that, is, uh, that uh, creates, I mean, the complete picture for mm -hmm. me. If I just may um, follow up on some of the things that you said in terms mm -hmm. of data, uh, perhaps models, uh, mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, the sort of, in, ter in terms of specifically speaking about performance of yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. people mm -hmm. as part of broader teams, um, what is it that you found in terms of any particular patterns or uh, repetitive behaviors that mm -hmm. you perhaps uh, uh, noticed during your uh, research, during you know, mm -hmm. your review of the data? And you know, if there are any models or any kind of solutions that you came up yeah. with, you know, if you can perhaps talk about these. There are like two directions in the, in the, in the psychology that refers to performance management. Uh, one of them is, uh, this is behavioral psychology. This is based basically on um, rewarding on reward schedules, something that's called the reward schedule. So if you reward someone, he's changing his, her behavior. It's very evolutionary approach. Yeah, that's even the simpler organism than 
uh, humans are also prone to this, kind, to, yeah, that, yes. responding to this kind of uh, behavior psycho psychology. But, but basically, uh, we, reward schedules are very powerful if you are uh, talking about rewarding, for example, sales teams, sales people, if you would like to change very simple behaviors. Like, for example, you are buying something at the shop and uh, the seller is supposed to upsell something to you, give you something extra, or I don't know, invite you to the loyalty program and so on and so on. These are usually, usually these are very short interactions with, uh, between the buyer and seller, like 20 seconds, and in the, these interactions must be, must be based on habits or some automatic behavior. So this is behavioral psychology. And in this, in this part we had, uh, we've, we, we've done a pl plenty of research about how people respond to rewards. How much time does it need to create the habit? How much time uh, the, we, we performed the research about something that's called the process memory. So uh, if, you have, if you have someone who is behaving in a, some specific way, how much time does it take uh, her or him to forget it? Yeah, mm -hmm. so like, because this is very important because you need to uh, repeat learning uh, before the person forgets about some, something. So if you, and if you have a you know, retail company, like 20,000 people, we have this kind of customers. Uh, this is very important uh, to know uh, what is the knowledge retention in the company? What is, when you should put the reward, how much, uh, what is the ratio of the reward? I mean, how much you should give this person, and so on, and so on. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you, of course, if you have, uh, I don't know, twenty thousand people, you need to to do it with some kind of machine learning or mathematics because it's a large amount of people. You have small teams, like you know, five, five people, uh, five people, sorry, or or ten people. The good manager is doing it uh, automatically. But if you have thousands of people, you need to to have some kind of uh, yeah, you need to employ a, a bit more. Yeah, it's confusing more, power more, to that. Yeah, yeah. This is this is where artificial intelligence mm -hmm. can come uh, come mm -hmm. to picture. So this is this is something. That, uh, the second part of the psychology that's more interesting for me is mm -hmm. social psychology. I mean that you have people that are influencing other people. Yeah. So we have high performers in the organization, and sometimes the high performers are not influencing this mid performers. I mean, these people in the middle of the organization. So we have some leaders, and these leaders are some kind of a in some kind of a closed society, they are not c communicating with the others. So the next, uh, the, the, the other, other patterns are how to get the knowledge out of the, the high performers and how to bring this knowledge to the, to the majority of the company. Because usually you have a very small number of leaders, but in the, in the middle of the company, you have like thousands of people. So it's, uh, it's, uh, this knowledge transfer, it's also based on some kind of a patterns, like identi identifying leaders, like patterns like knowledge sharing, like patterns like language patterns that are very much about what GPT uh, is providing, like you can get this knowledge from the leaders uh, use some artificial intelligence to populate this knowledge among among the others yeah? so this is this, uh, this this these are patterns related to two kinds of psychological psychology domains one is behavior psychology the second one is uh, social psychology and that's all <laughs> and uh, and in terms of any particular AI uh, linked products Yes. That you uh, and your team. Basically, offer. our platform, uh, a Tribeware as a platform, we call it Tribeware from the beginning. Uh, before it was a gaming platform, now it's a platform for the corporations. Uh, basically, uses uh, different, uh, many different uh, approaches to the machine learning and, and AI. But uh, some, but the, the main idea is to uh, personalize uh, the tasks that people are given uh, by using uh, AI-driven segmentation mm -hmm. and by using knowledge about the people. So, for example, if you are a new person in the company, you should be given very simple tasks. But as you evolve, you should be given more uh, more complex class. This is exactly like in the computer games, yeah? So where we are starting progress, the game, you, as you progress, you should be playing on the higher level. You, you, you progress from one level to another and so on. 
But uh, basically, the people are different, so the people progress uh, differently. So some of them may be slower, some of them may be faster, and also we have plenty of tasks. Some people may be very good in, in a, some specific task, like you know, placing the product on the shelf or upselling something to the customer. Some some different tasks, like I don't know, learning out, teaching others, or or um, sorting out the relations with the customers, etc. You have, depending on the company, you can have different competences, different tasks. And the role of the AI is to give the right people the right task. Yeah, so sometimes, or sometimes if the person is, uh, if we know more about the person, you can also give not only the task, but also some learning. Like uh, you can give the, I don't know, we have, imagine we have John, John finished finished some task and he was not very good at this task. And he we may can, be better at something yeah, else. We can, yeah, yeah you, can, we can, you can give, give, give him some tips, like you should, be doing this or this, or we can use the social influence I mentioned before, like, look, John, uh, Catherine is doing these things better. Look what she is doing. She will be your guide. She will be your leader. But the Catherine will be the, the, the leader, but basically this connection is created by the AI. So essentially, it's, it, it kind of steps in slightly to a certain degree into the shoes of the sort of mid-level manager yes, yes. who looks at his employees or her employees yeah, in a yeah, more yeah. objective, data-driven fashion, and that enhances not just productivity, but it also removes some biases and sort of human, yes, yes, human this, factor, this, this if you like, exactly, but in a good way. Yes, this is in a good way. We also take into consideration, for example, the effect of the stress at work. So if someone is uh, stressed, Probably uh, there is there are some problem with the control. I mean there is a, there is a, a theory by uh, Robert Karasek that the stress at work basically is based on the on the control. If you do not have control over something, you are feeling stressed. So if we if we feel that the person is stressed, we can we are trying to give this person more control over the task, so more information, more guidance, and so on and so on. So so we can feel all you can lower the level of the task, yes, because at the lower level you may have the greater, down a bit, yes. Yes, greater control. So the idea is to, to be some kind of the, this is called the flow funnel, so, uh, so that if the task should be so uh, adjusted to your skills, that you feel the flow, like mm -hmm. you like your work, you you, you like what what you are mm -hmm. doing, and, and you are doing this in the most effective way. Mm -hmm. So this is this is, and this is our uh, <laughs> this is our vision, our Nirvana. But mm -hmm. but basically, this is this is what the AI, what the overall vision of the AI is. But of course, there are many smaller algorithms that uh, create the task, that create the text for the task, that uh, accepts the tasks, uh, selects the messages sent to the people, and so on and so on. So the, um, the overall uh, picture is much more complex, and we are doing it bit by bit. I mean, we are not trying to to, we have the vision, the whole all vision. I mean, this this vision in mind about providing the flow to the people, but we are trying to do it step by step. Well, I suppose step by step is the best policy, isn't it? it, 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 it Business enables, wise, <laughs> yeah, enables consistency yeah. and sort of you know um, progression yeah. as uh, uh, as you as you move on. Um, in terms of because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of you know practical sort of straight out of you know, mm -hmm. business cycle or, or life examples. Um, so, you, you know, I've seen your website and you have a rather impressive list of uh, clients. And so, uh, you know, if you can think about, let's say, for the sake of discussion, three top examples of how you actually, you know, using uh, the, the, you know, the, the one, a one try product, mm -hmm. how you actually made a difference in terms of performance uh, for you know any one of your clients, obviously to the extent that you can talk about these <laughs> things, because I can imagine it's you know confidential yeah, yeah. to a degree. So uh, there are different cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of them are, for example, retail retail companies like um, IKEA. It's one of our latest customers, and so we already published articles, I mean, case studies about it, so I, I, I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. So the, the, um, uh, in this case, we are uh, working on uh, uh, 
something that is called proactive sales. So if you are in the shop, the person, assistant, should propose you uh, the product that are adapted to your needs. For, for example, in IKEA, you're buying at a kitchen and you should be offered not only kitchen, but also some appliances. Stuff uh, around it as Stuff well. around, yeah. And uh, proactive size is about ups and cross. So there is a lot of like behavioral stuff on one hand. On the second hand, it's a social job because in uh, in the, in the retail stores like IKEA, you are not interacting with one person. You are interacting with different people around the shop. Yes, so you are interacting with the with someone from the kitchen's division, with cashier, in the, with someone uh, in the restaurant. Yes, so and the, on one hand, you need to be given the message that you should, I don't know, choose something extra, etc., uh, etc. Et on the second hand, the experience on the different levels very much affects. What uh, what will happen? Yeah. So so this is what uh, this is what uh, what we are doing, and this can be measured very mathematically, like upside in sales or the, the the number of the items on the ticket at the cash and so on and so on. And this is what we handle. This is one example. But on the other side, we have a different example: pharmaceutical companies. During the pandemic, the pharmaceutical companies were in the need of very fast digital transformation because you have you know you have medical representatives usually they were i don't know visiting hospitals doctors universities they were promoting new therapies new drugs and so on and so on and now everything is closed yeah you cannot go to the hospital because this pandemic there's a lockdown yeah so you cannot go to the you cannot go to some conference to meet your peers colleagues and so on so you need to switch to the fully to the digital modes and uh, the people are very different. You have, uh, I don't know, medical representatives that are doctors, of, or, or you have uh, professors of medicines that are uh, medicine that are responsible for some kind of therapies and so on and so. On. And now these diverse people need to use some kind of a system, and we we deploy we used our system in like seven countries to switch people to the digital channels completely. Trans- essentially to, to change the modus operandi. Change, to, change the modus yeah. operandi. And it was, it is, I mean, the vision is huge. Like, again, the vision is very huge, like digital transformation strategies, a lot of software products. But uh, at the bottom, you have very simple behaviors. Like, I want to do something. I need to use some form in the internet. I need to use, after meeting with my colleague, I need to put some information in the CRM. And if I'm not doing it, and there is a pandemic, there is a lockdown, there is no other way to exchange knowledge. Yeah, so, and in this case, we have a very huge, I mean, we have very, uh, very huge results, like from, I don't know, 15, 16% of task completion with, I mean, doing this task using this various computer systems, we've moved uh, the, the we've, we've reached the goal like 74, 75% of task completion. So people were very successful in doing the task using this, uh, this electronic channel. So on one hand, you have very, uh, uh, we have the retail environment with sim- maybe not simple sales, but to daily sales. On the second hand, you have more complex processes like digital transformation. And we have plenty of campaigns. We call it campaigns because uh, th- this is how we call our projects. This is usually a campaign because campaign has some financial results uh, connected to it. Uh, we have campaigns for um, for the whole spectrum of companies, so production companies, logistics. So uh, every sector, really. Every sector, really. I mean, the main sector is retail and pharmaceuticals because this is where we have our first successes, and this is your natural uh, kind of expansion. This is, yeah, this is natural expansion, but basically we have the full spectrum of, of the market. And in terms of your numerous years of. Uh, you know, you're looking at the data and you mm-hmm. know, human behavior. Um, in terms of performance still, I mean, you can tell it's a very fascinating subject to, to me. Uh, and I think about it a lot myself, but what did you think, what would you think helps people realize their true potential in terms of the you know, performance? You know? Is it persistency? Is it having you know, a, a very well thought out 
plans or checklists? What is it? Or is, is it that everyone kind of works yeah, differently? I, I mean, there's, there are a lot of things, but the ma I mean, three, three major things I, I see from the data is social proof. Okay. So, um, uh, I'm afraid, I mean, social proof is something like I'm afraid to do something but when I see my colleague, someone very similar to, to me, is doing this, I'm following. So the, in, the, in, the, in the social proof, the two very important things are social distance and authority. So if someone, social distance means my colleague, I mean, close, close social distance means usually my colleague. Authority means someone I trust. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is, this is authority. Yeah, so we may have someone of the, um, I mean, these things works together. I mean, the best, the best thing is that I have colleague I trust. So it's, it's, and social proof is like 30, 40% 40 in, uh, in, in uh, performance, uh, uh, um, growth. Uh, it's it's very very powerful mechanism. I mean, if you can identify which people are connected, which people are connected, and how they can cooperate and how they can influence each other, it's 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 a huge thing. The second thing is um, uh, the second thing is concentration of focus. So we are very jealous about people's attention. Yeah. So in our application, you got like three up to five tasks, not more. You need to focus on what you are doing. So if you are working on upsell of the kitchen appliances, we really mean it. I mean, you need to focus on the uh, upsell of, uh, of human, uh, of, uh, of uh, kitchen appliances. Now, this, is, uh, this is concentration. So we have social, uh, social and, and this is, uh, I mean, this is also, to, I'm, here I, I cannot give you the numbers, but uh, we really, Changed. Uh, we really have the growth, like in hundreds, or even uh, even we have even for one of the customer we have we have uh, we have like ten times growth. It was more than one thousand percent just by focusing people on the some, right things, on the right, right one, thing, at the right moment. Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, we live insane. in so. Um, um, I mean, so distracted world. Then this is this is this is something that that that. That is, it's, it's obvious. I mean, this mechanism is, is, is very, very obvious. Uh, and the third thing is uh, there's a social proof. And the third thing is uh, knowledge transfer from the high performers to the to the mid performers. You know, this is basically the statistics. So if you have the performance in the company, I'm taking into consideration one task, you have usually this bell bell curve. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is or Gauss curve, yes, yeah? so we had normal distribution. Yeah? But basically, usually you have a lot of people in the middle of, of the of the of the of this of this performance performance distribution. And if you manage to get very simple information on how to sell the I don't know, mobile phone insurance, yeah, what questions to ask the, the, the customer and give it take it, this information from the high performance and give it to these people in the middle, you can create a very huge growth in uh, in the in the in the company. So it's a social proof, I mean to, to summarize this, it's a social proof focus. Uh, concentration and uh, high performance to the uh, to the uh, mean to the median uh, transfer knowledge transfer. And in terms of what the future holds, you reckon for you, for your company, for the broader um, AI market, you know, what's in store? Do you think? And also. Mm -hmm. um, do you plan any interna interna internationalization of your of your yeah, efforts yeah, yeah. We, further still? Or? I mean that like one thing is what future what future holds for the company. I I think that the, there are two like two words that uh, are I mean two trends that are uh, related to technology. One is intelligence augmentation. Uh, you, you know, there's, the, the, there's artificial intelligence, this AI, and intelligence augmentation, IA. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you have this like two words. Intelligence augmentation is like extending human possibilities with, uh, with technology. Yeah? So it's like building a cyborg out of the person. <laughs> yeah. And this is, I believe this is something that is, um, that is a cause of actual AI evolution. Yeah? Because it's, it's not 
algorithms and data because we had it before. But as you mentioned, this is the user experience. I mean that I can use this GPT for, I don't know, prepare the essay for the studies or help me to prepare the grocery list or something like this. Yeah, so this is extending my possibilities. And this is, this is what we see as a future for our system, that for every employee in the company, this focus on concentration, identifying peers that can help me, identifying the best task to do now, it's intelligence augmentation. It's augmenting of our, our intelligence in times where we, we have plenty of signals from around, we are very, uh, we have very challenging environment with a lot of information, we need to focus on, on the things. So this is, this is what our technology is doing. Uh, the second thing is, uh, there is a book by uh, Thaler, I don't remember the first name, so this is my fault, uh, called Natch. Uh, and nudge, nudging is, uh, I mean, moving, uh, suggesting people in which direction they should go in a, in a very subtle way, like nudging Yeah, someone. so to, to almost to, to, to the extent that they think it's them came, yes, came up with it. Yes, yeah. this is manipulation actually, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but basically Thaler is a, he, he, he's a Nobel laureate. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so his idea is that you, you, you could create for the people some, something that's called, for organization, something that's called a choice architecture. So you, you cannot, in today's environment, you cannot give the people the orders, like in the army, <laughs> like, let's go do this. But you need nah. to create some choice architecture. You need to give, show the people the pros, the cons, and guide the people for, to, to, to make the right choices. Of course, for some choices, you need data. And this is the second thing. I mean, we, we would like to, to be this, the, the system that is empowering this choice architecture. And uh, talking about internationalization, I mean, this, these are the two trends that are so powerful that we can use these trends to go globally. I mean, for now, we are talking that we are doing AI, but basically the vision is to use the AI to nudge people to go to the, to the right way. And we have the, we have the first confirmation because we started in Poland, then we moved to the greater Gulf countries, I mean, Arabic countries, uh, mainly through the pharmaceutical companies because the same processes that are used in Poland are used all around the world. We are planning to enter the next, uh, next market. And uh, we are working with something that is pretty universal. I mean, uh, human psychology, there are some cu cultural differences, but basically this, this basic psychology is very universal. So we believe, uh, we believe that this is, I mean, we have the right product. Uh, what we are now building is this, these are the sales channels. So we are opening the next sales channels for different countries using different tools, but basically are working. We are working. The common the, denominator is the, the same. Common, the same common speed. denominator is the same. You need to provide. Uh, you need to find a way to to bring this common value to the to the to the right markets. Yeah. So this is what we are now working on. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an absolutely breathtaking interview when it comes to uh, you know the, the sort of insight that we received here in terms of how AI-based products are actually developed what is the rationale behind them and how they can actually go beyond just trying to beat chatbot GPT uh, in his response, in his, in his responses, frankly. So thank you so much, thank uh, you. Uh, Wojciech, and uh, yeah, see you guys next week and take care. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you. Bye.